The people that live in Porter Ranch, and I, I have some friends, I've seen their posts recently on social media, these nosebleeds, all these various things that are associated with this, and there is this odorant that's introduced into the gas, which I can't find the name for, Merc, Merca... Mercaptan. Mercaptan. Okay, so this is introduced into the gas so that we can smell it, and this is one of the things that is, I guess, making people have the sick symptoms. But my question is, so if that had not been introduced into the gas, and it's unfortunate that it's making all these people so sick, were we going to know? Were we going to know that this well was leaking at the rate that it was leaking? I'm sure at some point they were going to come back around and check, supposedly, the integrity of the well. But without this smell, would we have known? Well, I think you sort of hit the, you know, the nail on the head of an issue that a lot of people haven't really looked at. Because there are facilities located around the United States that don't have mercaptan in them. And when you don't sell that gas to, say, residential customers or you're not located in an area uh, where it's populated, a lot of the facilities, they don't inject that material into them. And so we think we actually know that there are a lot of leaks throughout the system in the United States where people just are totally unaware because there's no odorant in it, because it's in an unpopulated area. And in this particular one, the mercaptan, which is an irritant in addition to just an odorant, uh, it's the consistent and persistent odors is really quite bothersome and, mm -hmm. and irritating people physiologically. That and the combined effect of carcinogens that are in the air that have been detected, other, um, other uh, ozone-forming compounds that may or may not be contributing to local air quality problems. I mean, those are all things that are making people sick. You know, they may not necessarily be giving people cancer today, you know, and, and there may be actually below the threshold. And indeed, the health departments have said that you're not likely to be getting, you know, long-term health effects from this problem. But what I do know is that if I'm living in a community and I'm smelling something where somebody said, oh, I've detected a carcinogen in that air, I'm certainly going to be worried. And that, I know, makes people sick. Persistent worry, the not knowing, and the not knowing about the health of their children, that creates physiological responses in and of itself. Understood. The, the pictures that I've seen of the people that have had these nosebleeds, and I don't want to focus on that too much, but it's just, I'm shocked. I mean, I haven't had a nosebleed. I don't even remember when the last time I had a nosebleed was. And when I had one, it did, certainly didn't look as bad as what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people with handkerchiefs just completely covered with blood. It's shocking. There's also, what, benzene coming out of the well as well? Mm -hmm. Now, that, that's certainly a carcinogen, isn't it? That's right. It's a known carcinogen. And, you know, on the nosebleed front, I was talking to a woman uh, you know, last week who was telling me about her three-year-old kid. And I have, I have a kid myself, and, you know, her kid had his first nosebleed. And I can't imagine if I was sitting there and I was looking at my three-year-old and all of a sudden his nose started bleeding and I was smelling something in the air. I mean, that is just atrocious to have to live through that.